Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael with IDB. And in this video, I have 15 settings that you should change for optimal performance on your iPhone. So grab your phone to follow along. Let's go ahead and get started right now. All right, so setting number one, jump into settings and then scroll down to privacy and then scroll down again to Apple advertising and make sure personalized ads is turned off. So what this does is it uses various uh, usage data and it kind of tracks you to advertise based on what it thinks you'll like. And personally, I find this a little bit creepy. It's kind of like what Google does when it tracks you across various websites. So just make sure personalized ads is turned off uh, if you want your iPhone to track you just a little bit less. Next up, number two is also inside of privacy settings. So back out of Apple advertising and then click on analytics and improvement and then turn off improve Siri and dictation. So pretty much what this would allow Apple to do in essence is listen to your audio recordings of when you talk to Siri and when you use dictation as the audio recordings could get sent to Apple. So some people find this a little bit creepy. I honestly do too. So turn off improve Siri and dictation and then you can make sure that all of your audio recordings are staying on your device. Setting number three is also inside this page and it's at the very top here where it says share iPhone and watch analytics. So this toggle itself isn't actually that bad as it's just sharing some data for your iPhone to Apple. It's actually not sharing any personal information like the audio recordings was, but it can actually use battery life and cellular data without you knowing it. So if you wanna save a bit of battery life and potentially not use as much data when you're on the go, turn this off and your iPhone uh, might have a bit better performance. All right, so we have two more settings inside of privacy. So next up is inside tracking. And then you're gonna click on allow apps to request to track and turn that off. So you may have gotten that pop up every time you download a new application uh, where the app asks if they can track you. And obviously most people click on no. So you can completely avoid having that pop up in the first place just by turning off this toggle. Okay, we have one more inside of privacy settings. I know there's a lot. The last one is inside location services. So click on this and then you wanna scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on system services and you wanna fine tune when you want your iPhone to get your location. So the number one toggle that I like to turn off in here is location based suggestions. So I have that turned off, but there also are a whole bunch that you don't need turned on. So such as significant locations. If you click on this, you can turn off significant locations and I have it blurred out here because I don't want you to see everywhere I've been. But as you can see here, my iPhone has 132 records of places I've been. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off as I don't want my iPhone to know every single place I go. So next up at number six is inside display and brightness settings. And this is if you're tired of your iPhone automatically dimming and then locking itself when you don't want it to. So click on where it says auto lock and by default on the iPhone, it's set to only 30 seconds, which I find is pretty fast for your iPhone to automatically shut off. So if you want, you can turn this all the way up to five minutes, but personally, I just set it to never. So I uh, never have my iPhone automatically lock itself uh, when I put it down and leave the screen on. Uh, usually if I want to lock my iPhone, I just hit the lock button. All right, setting number seven is one that I find so annoying, and it's probably the first thing I change whenever I set up a new phone. So inside notifications, scroll down to messages, and then you're gonna click on customize notifications. So for some reason, messages is the only app on the iPhone that will repeat alerts. I don't know why, but I will always see my notifications and if I choose not to respond to a message, it's because I don't want to. So I don't want my iPhone to tell me again that I have an unread message. So I always turn off repeat alerts, so I just set this to never. Next up at number eight is inside mail settings. Scroll down a bit where it says privacy protection and then turn on protect mail activity. This allows it so your iPhone is not sharing your mail data with people who send you emails. So sometimes there are slightly malicious things inside emails that can tell the sender various information about you, such as if you read the email or if you even opened it. So make sure to turn on protect mail activity and give yourself a bit more privacy when using mail. Number nine is inside of app store settings. Personally, I have an unlimited data plan on my iPhone and I like to download a whole bunch of apps even when I'm out using cellular data. So for me, a pesky notification is every time I download an app, it asks me if I want to download it. And of course, I'm gonna say yes, I wanna download it every single time. So to turn off this annoying little notification, click on where it says app store and then app downloads and set it to always allow. This way, your iPhone will always download applications no matter what the size is over cellular data. Next up at number 10 is for those of you that use voice memos. So at the bottom of settings, click on voice memos 
And first up, you wanna change it from audio quality compressed to lossless. So I don't know why it's set to compressed. I find the quality is pretty bad when it's set to this. So set it to lossless audio quality as you'll get the most out of your microphones on your iPhone. And next up in here is location-based naming. So for some reason, this is set to default. Every time you record a new voice memo, the title of that voice memo will be the location that you were at. Personally, I don't like this. I just like to be called voice memo one, voice memo two, etc. So turn off location-based naming if you don't like that feature. Next up at number 11 is inside Wallet and Apple Pay. So if you have passes that have been used already and they're still showing up in your wallet app, it's probably because you have this toggle turned off. So turn on hide expired passes and then every single pass that has been used or is past due will be hidden inside the wallet app. This one is pretty useful. Number 12, this one is probably my favorite inside of camera settings. For some reason, these two are turned off by default and I don't know why. So the first one is use volume up for burst. So when you get a new iPhone, this is actually turned off. And the only way to take a burst mode photo inside the camera app is to drag the shutter left, which is kind of annoying. So as you can see there, now I'm taking a burst mode photo. But if you just want to take a burst mode photo with the volume button, turn on use volume up for burst. And then inside the camera app, when you press and hold the volume up button, you can start taking a burst mode photo just like that. And also inside of camera settings, grid by default is turned off. So just make sure this is turned on. And then you'll have two by two lines going vertical and horizontal on your screen, as you can see there. And this will allow you to frame your photo a lot better. So speaking of grid, let's set up a grid in our notes app also. So inside of notes, you can click on where it says lines and grids. And the default view inside the notes app is just a blank page. But in here, as you can see, we have a whole bunch of line settings. So I'll choose this one. It looks like it's pretty good. And now every time I create a new note, I'll have these lines automatically put on my page. So next up, our second to last setting is inside of maps. So for some people that don't drive, so say for example, you live in a dense urban city center and you like to cycle or walk places, you can set it up so when you start to navigate somewhere in maps, it'll automatically get that type of travel. So out of the box, it's set to driving automatically, but you can set it up to whatever you like, walking, transit, or cycling. So I'll set it up for cycling. Okay, our last setting. If you stuck around to the end of this video, you are gonna be very happy you did because this is probably my favorite setting to change on my iPhone. So I listen to a lot of rock music and there's a setting inside of Apple Music settings called EQ or Equalizer. So by default, it's set to off, but based on the type of music that you listen to the most, so in my case, it's metal and rock, I can set my equalizer to a certain setting and it makes the music sound so much better. So if you listen to a lot of uh, electronic music, you can set electronic EQ. Or if you listen to a lot of hip hop and rap, you can set that also. So this really does make an insane difference. And once you listen to your music with EQ turned on and then you turn it off again, you'll really notice the difference. So this is one of the first settings I change on a new phone whenever I'm using Apple Music. The EQ works really, really well. So hopefully this video was useful to you guys and hopefully you also learned something new. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to drop a like on this video if you found it helpful. My name is Mike with IDB and I'll see you in the next video.